Hi. Hey, Abby Ham. Oh my gosh, Stephen Brown. <sighs> you have been on a whirlwind tour. And you always are. I feel like with your life, you are always going, 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 jetting from one place to another, helping this person, doing this party. But this White House thing was a big deal. It was a big deal and still is a big deal. But um, at this time of year, we're always busy. And you think, we can't cram in another thing. And, you know, how could we be busier? And then the White House calls. <laughs> and that's not a project you can say, oh, no, I don't want to do that. You have to say, oh, the White House is on the phone. And then you do it. So it's been a crazy, um, well, it's been a crazy about six weeks, but it's been a really crazy um, the last two weeks. Stephen, I could not believe it when you told me that you were going to be able to do a lot of the big rooms at the White House. The decor was so you, it was so perfect. How was that when you got the call about doing this job? Well, it was one of those things that, because you always hear that, um, you know, people are decorating the White House and they have a huge volunteer program where like 150 people are chosen to, and that's like local florist and that kind of thing, they're uh, invited to come and help at the White House, which is a volunteer program. Um, and I thought, well, maybe that's what they want. And then they said, no, we want you to design the White House. And it started out very, very easily. They said, we would like for you to do the China Room. And the China Room is where all the presidential China has been kept they even have a plate from George Washington. So it's all the presidents um, from beginning to now in that room. So I said, okay. And I first I drew a little model and I thought, well, the model's really cute, so I'll make a video of it. And then I decided, okay, let me make a better model. So I sent that in um, and, well, I actually went there and showed them the model. And they said, oh my gosh, we love it. We love the China Room. And the model actually went to, um, I couldn't get it back. So, because <laughs> she really liked it. And um, so after they received the model, they said, well, the China room is nice, but maybe you would be interested in another room. And I'm like, well, what would the next room be? And they said, well, maybe the east entrance. That's where you enter the White House. Um, and then they said, what about the east colonnade, which is the long hallway that you see, 81 feet long. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh. So then that sort of, I sent the designs for that and we talked about it. And, um, and then it led up to, um, these are all the largest spaces in the White House and um, sort of the most prestigious spots in the White House. And then they came and said, we would like for you to do the cross hall and grand foyer. And that is the main room of the White House. <laughs> so... Um, so that was the most interesting part of the whole project because the first thing they said was, okay, so Dr. Biden, she has a dream for this room and that is that there's a Santa in a sleigh and eight reindeer that are life size that are circling through the grand foyer. So they take off and then they dip under the columns and then they dip under the columns and then they head for the door and they're painting this entire picture and I'm like, okay, so where do we attach the reindeer? And they said, oh, what's well, the White House? You can't attach it anywhere. You have to figure out what makes them fly. <laughs> so then it, sound, it seemed a little like I was being, you know, are there video cameras? Is, is this a trick? So, but you know us, it's always about figuring out what will make that happen. And the first thing that popped in my mind was, what if we had like a, a reindeer roller coaster? What if there was this metal contraption that carried them up, but it looked like their, um, you know, everything that was their bridles holding them together? And uh, so that was where it sort of was thought of. And um, luckily, Brian Crabtree, his uh, father and brother, and Mark Howard, who's an engineer that works with us, um, said, I think this is a little crazy, but let's look at it. And here in Knoxville, we actually built a replica of the Grand Foyer, and they built this, this contraption to put the reindeer on. So then we had the contraption, but then I had to make the reindeer. So the first, you know me well enough to know my, my attention span is not great, and I made the first reindeer, 
and it's so big and I'm carrying it, you know, we've taken over this entire building and I'm carrying these reindeers down the hallways and um, so the first one was good and then the second one was good and I'm like, oh, I have to make eight of these. <laughs> so um, it was one of those things that I sort of ran out of space in my crafting because everywhere there were reindeers, you know, standing on things and I think, I think you saw some of them perhaps on Papa Noel weekend, but um, so that was the funniest story of, oh my gosh, you have to do it because, you know, the Dr. first lady's Bones. asking for it. <laughs> so, uh, so thank goodness we figured that out. And that was the room that um, made newspapers all around the world. So now everybody's calling about those giant reindeer. <laughs> so you'll be making many more, I bet. I'm sure. <laughs> Tell me something. What was it like to be chosen for this? I know we, we, it was a huge honor and all of that, but this is a huge scale. And Dr. Biden found you. How did they find you and what did that feel like? That's the kind of thing you really, you never really know that information. Um, it's a very secretive project. Um, the theme each year is very secretive. Um, and they tell you only like three people in the world know what the theme is at that point. And, you know, that's a hard secret to keep. And people are wondering, where are you? Why aren't you posting on Instagram? Why are we not crafting? Why are we not? And you're like, I can't really, I'm working on a project. Um, so you don't know exactly how, you know, you land there. Uh, but when they call, you know, it's such an honor because, you know, it is the, it's the White House. And, you know, I think, through the years, I've always imagined, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't it be, you know, what could it be? But at the same time, Glitterville's not the first thing you think of when you think of the White House. <laughs> um, you know, most of the time, their decor leans more towards um, sprayed gold magnolias and, you know, very soft, you know, evergreen and berries. And so when this project came up, the, um, the theme is actually... Uh, for the Grand Foyer, at least, is celebrating the 200th anniversary of Twas the Night Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, even though it's the last room I was assigned, I think they were just putting us through the, you know, through the test to get to it. So, <laughs> but to hear, you know, there are these two giant niches in the very front of the White House. And in those, they wanted a scene. And... For those, I thought, well, this is straightforward. This is not hanging reindeer from imaginary places. Um, but I showed the sketches, which I have here. Um, I showed them the sketches, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful, we love it. Now keep in mind, you can't touch the niches. <laughs> Can we touch anything here? Anything? And the answer down? to that is no, you cannot, <laughs> uh, because it is the White House. Yeah. And, um, and it also hits you, of course, that's, an, that's another story, but uh, it also hits you that, you know, you're putting decor and decorating and spending long hours into the, into the morning, um, which there's some funny stories about, uh, in a place where, you know, Abraham Lincoln, everybody, you know, all the presidents on your money, everybody you've ever heard about has lived there. Uh, Washington never lived there, so don't send mail. I know that. Um, but, you know, his plate lives there. Though. His plate lives there and he would have lived there. But um, but you think about that kind of history and everything that's happening. And um, and it was one of those projects that you just it, it consumed every minute. I haven't checked my email in probably a month. I have no idea what's happening in email. Um, but, you know, you don't have time to look at anything. But when I would go to the bathroom, I would look up things that happened in that room and you see all these people and it's like, oh my gosh. So, it's crazy. So Did it's, you get to meet the president and first lady? That information is sort of uh, okay. also uh, secretive. But you do so many secret projects. I, know, I just you want can, you to you give me the dish. Abby Ham wants you to kiss and tell always. <laughs> always. And she's always been this way. <laughs> but I don't play that game. But yes, um, um, Dr. Biden, you will see some photos of. Okay. Um, she and I, and um, 
So yeah, it's an amazing thing. Oh, it was magical. It was just magical. And you did this all in six weeks here in Knoxville? Yes. The, so it, the bulk of it was made here in town? Well, oh, all of it was made okay. here in town okay. in the back of Glitterville. So if you've been to Glitterville lately and you think, oh, what is going on? There are people everywhere back here turning around and going on. Um, it was all built here because it was a secret. You know, mm -hmm. and it's one of those projects that you couldn't even call in everybody you know because um, it's a secret that if you tell, you know, you'll trouble. be in trouble. Yeah. So, um, so actually, it was just mostly our team and uh, Jeff Crabtree and Brian and uh, Aaron Crabtree and Mark Howard and um, and even our friend Mark Hines and his daughter Charlotte and I mean it was a labor of love. And of course, Jess and Ken and everyone here and Michelle, um, they've all been put through. And PK, I think after that, it's like, it's like the Oscars. Um, <laughs> Who do have I, I forgot anybody <laughs> and everyone else I forgot to mention. Um, but it was this tight group of people who work here and, you know, have had long time, um, you know, history with Glitterville. And we just all worked on it and, and then had to go there. And then the worst part of the project was um, the Saturday before we left was the day we had to pack. And that was the day things were getting really crazy and trucks were coming and Brian was saying, we've got so many trucks and we've got to get it all on there. And they kept loading and loading. And he told me that morning at 8 o'clock, he said, okay, we're going to pack and we have to leave here by 4 o'clock. Six at the very latest. He, and I know that means he wants to leave at six because he always gives me that buffer. So four o'clock came, nothing. Six o'clock came, nothing. Eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. We finished packing at 2 a.m. Oh my goodness. And not far before that hour, Brian says to me, we haven't even packed the reindeer. Now you have to know that these reindeer take up like a horse trailer because they're huge. And I said, what are we going to do? And I panicked a little bit, but he went and got our white van, um, which we carry a lot of stuff in, and filled it full of bubble wrap. And he said, it's like a Serta mattress now. And then we put all the reindeer in there, and they just rode like that to Washington. So The van should be pink, I just want to say. The I white know. van, come on. That's it was supposed to, to be originally, but then we thought, no, everybody will know where we are. Yeah. So he likes keeping it very neutral Undercover. at this point. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, sense. it's been a crazy, Gosh. crazy um, crazy time. And the reaction has been insane. You've been getting calls from, I won't name the celebs. Yes. I'll let you if you want to. But a lot of people have been in touch like, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? All at the last minute because it is December. I know. It is, it is one of those things you think I can't cram in another thing, but we are cramming in at least a couple more really fun things. Um, so stay tuned. Okay. Maybe on Instagram. I okay. Don't know. Okay. I know you've made some appearances in my favorite celebrities post before. Yes. Um, okay. So I, I just want for people who do not know you, for them to be able to get to know you a little bit, because everybody goes, where is he from? How did he get to this point? Like his mind works in mysterious ways. Like how does he, how does he do it all? You were born and raised in Rockwood, Tennessee. Mm-hmm and grew up there and tell us just a little bit about your childhood in Rockwood. I think it was pretty normal. I, get, I think the difference for me is that I was always making things and that was the one obsession that I had was always just planning and making things. And So you're really good at art class? Yes. You aced yes. it. Yes. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't add or subtract or I can't even say that. <laughs> add or subtract um, I can read. Yeah, thank yeah, goodness, thank goodness, but, yeah. But math left me completely. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that kind of thing really wasn't a big concern of me. And they say that whatever you do in, what is it, second grade or sixth grade or whatever it is, you do the rest of your life. That's what you're meant to do. Uh, so I think that's pretty much true. Um, and I actually said yesterday at the White House, um, one of the things when I was little is, other kids would be asking for toys uh, for Christmas, like whatever the popular toys were. And I was always asking for Christmas decoration. And one of the things I always asked for was a life-size set of reindeer. 
And if I couldn't, to put in the yard. And if I couldn't get that, then I wanted craft supplies to make them. Well, I never got the reindeer, and I never made the reindeer at the time. But it's, it's pretty interesting that now, today, the reindeer that I made with my hands are now soaring over, you know, everyone at the White House. So it's sort of a full circle um, kind of thing. But to answer your question, I, you know, was always just, Crafty. you know, a goofball making things and puppets. I loved puppets. I loved any kind of character that moved. Um, I know when I was little, uh, we would go to Oak Ridge, and there was some little bakery. I don't know where it was, but there was a little bakery and it had these little elves in the window. And I think they only did this, but, you know, carrying a pan of cookies. Um, but I love that. And I would spend the rest of my year trying to, you know, make some display for Christmas. So... What did your parents think? Oh, I'm sure everybody thought I was crazy, but I didn't really <laughs> care. Um, you know, that's when, a question people always say is, well, how was your high school years, and what did you, you know, and did you do that? And it's like, they were sort of a blip to me because I was always, you know, thinking about something else, and, you know, I wanted to move to New York and do fun things and be on a soap opera, and, you know, because that was a sideline. I thought, oh, I'll just be on a soap opera three days a week. Um, oh, I'll so, in But that. then I went on and worked on those, so it was like, oh, okay. You did. After high school, tell everybody where you went after that. I know Mariah Carey factors in somewhere. Yeah, well, I went to uh, Roan State uh, for a while in art, and, um, and of course, you know, Ann Powers is a good friend of mine. She was, at that time, um, the art instructor, and... Even she, I think, thought I was crazy. It's like, well, I'm trying to teach you fine art, and you're making, you know, sugar plums over here. So I don't know that I fit in there either, but <laughs> then I went to the University of Tennessee, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go to the acting program. But on, like, the very first day, um, my friend Marianne Custer, who was over the costume program, asked me if I would do a set of renderings for a competition, a costume competition. I said, sure. So I did them, and they won first place, which came with a scholarship. So I suddenly I was like, oh, but I want to be on the soap opera. Uh, but now I'm going to be in costume. So I went that direction, and, uh, which was great, because costume design teaches you lots of different things mm -hmm. and uh, how to make things I didn't know how to make, maybe. Um, so I did that, and then I left UT and went to um, New York. And that was a crazy experience because, you know, people don't really move. You know, here it's a little odder than other places because if they hear you're moving to New York, everybody's like, oh my gosh, New York, New York. Um, so it was a little weird, but I went and um, I took my portfolio. And this is an old story, but um, I went there, took my portfolio, and I went, I made appointments at all these places I wanted to work. And each one would say, well, yes, we'll hire you. This is great, we'll hire you. And then I would say, oh, but I don't live here. But I just wanted to see if I could get a job if I did. And everybody's like, you are wasting our time. Well, <laughs> the last place I went was the um, costume shop for television and film um, there in New York. And I said to the person who I was interviewing with, um, she said, well, you, you're hired, you can start next week. And I said, oh, but I don't live here. But if you get me an apartment, I'll move here. And she said, we don't get people apartments. And I'm like, okay, I'll call you next week. And then the very next week I called and I said, did you get me an apartment? This is Stephen from Tennessee. Click. Tuesday, click. Wednesday, click. Thursday, we got you an apartment. So I had an apartment now, so I... I flew to New York and uh, started working on soap operas um, as the world turns, which is really what I wanted. Uh, in <laughs> but in a different design, way, yeah. In costume design. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that was kind of crazy. And then I started working for Mariah Carey and doing some of her movies and, and making ornaments. And at the same time, people said, oh my gosh, you should, you should sell those ornaments. And then... Um, and then since that time, you know, Goodreville today is sold in every country around the world. And 
I've done TV series. And Craft Wars. Craft Wars. On TLC. With Tori Spelling. With Tori Spelling. Who gave you your pet? Who gave me Dolly Poulet. Yeah. Uh, so Where is Dolly Poulet? She, well, she's at the sitter at the moment. Oh, okay. Because okay. we just flew in. I was just making um, sure she was alive and yeah. well. Okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. Rewind. So you started the ornaments while you were working for Mariah Carey. Uh huh. You both have emerged as like. Very uh, defining characters in Christmas. In Christmas. Because who knew that her hit would live on for years to come. I know. But um, you started then. So when was Glitterville, what year was Glitterville founded? Uh, in 2003. Okay. And then, um, you know, and it's one of those things that, you know, I've never wanted anyone to define me in one particular way. <clears throat> like, I couldn't think of anything worse than be someone saying, oh, he's just an ornament maker. I'm like ornament maker so I didn't want to be um, pigeonholed into that one thing so I continued to say oh well yeah TV I'll do that and oh uh, work for Oprah oh that'll be fun and you've um, done every every Christmas I feel like we get together and you tell me some crazy story about Oprah's holiday magazine shoot the cover and you get stuck on an iceberg or I mean your stories over the years and we usually touch base every December it makes me laugh no with you know Oprah is such an incredible person and um, her creative director Adam Glassman um, who became a really good friend you know through the years and I'll, I'll also say that, you know, people say, well, how did you get to this point? You know, how do you, how do you go from crafting at the table to being with Oprah and doing all these other things? And, you know, the thing that I always tell people is that you can't take no for an answer. You can't really believe what other people tell you, uh, good or bad, necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to really, you know, just see how you feel when you're doing it. And you just have to persevere. And, you know, with Oprah, there's, there's several things along the way that really, I think, were the cornerstones that made Glitterville popular today. One of them, of course, was working with Oprah and getting that exposure. And how did that happen? Well, that just happened from being really dedicated to making things and making the best things so you get their attention. And, you know, and through the years, there's been so many stories with Oprah, oh my gosh. including being trapped on a glacier. The glacier, uh, sorry, I said an iceberg. <laughs> for three days. Uh, Same thing, right? You know, in the, in the cold, <laughs> yeah. on a glacier. Yeah, crazy. Um, so, you know, there's all those crazy things. And then um, anthropology was a big part of it also because um, they came to us and I started designing like a nutcracker for them every year. Then we started designing other things for them. And, you know, so people saw it in anthropology and then they saw it with Oprah. And, you know, there were just so many different things that, um, you know, if I had just been making ornaments with my head down, it would have never gotten this exposure. But because, you know, I'm crazy and willing to take the risk to do all these crazy projects, those are what really, you know, come together and make you, oh, oh, I know that. And, you know, a lot of people say they recognize Glitterville and they don't even know from where. But it may be from TV. It may be from the magazines. It may be from, you know, one of the stores they shop at. And they just don't even know that it is Glitterville product. So. And you've done the window displays at what? Neiman's? Which department store? Yeah, Neiman Marcus we yeah. um, have a big partnership with. And we do their windows uh, every year and their trees. And um, Did you do that this year? Well, this year, um, I had to actually say, oh my gosh, we, we're really busy on a project. And it's like, what is busier than us? And uh, so we worked that out. <laughs> and luckily, there is a tree that, um, a tropical tree that uh, we did earlier, mm -hmm. which was able to be used at Neiman's this year. So Great. Um, but we have lots of exclusive product only at Neiman's that, um, you know, you can look up and, and see there. So only available at Neiman Marcus. <laughs> you know, you are such a staple in this downtown area now too with this beautiful store and it's magical what, when people come in, their reaction, does that bring you joy? Yeah, it's, it's fun because to us it's very normal. I mean, I don't, I look around and it's, it's like having a brown sofa, you know, it's just the normal <laughs> thing. So, sofa. <laughs> my sofa is pink, but she is not a brown sofa. She is not. 
Um, <laughs> that is Marie Sweet. And she is fabulous. Yes, and she is crystalled um, <laughs> within an inch of her life. Um, so yeah, it's fun when people see it for the first time, and or if they come to one of the showrooms in Atlanta or Dallas or Vegas or LA or wherever they are, you know, those are where the, the spaces are really developed, you know, and, and are beautiful and French. One of them is made from a, a bedroom that was pulled out of an apartment in France. And, mm -hmm. you know, so those get very detailed, mm -hmm. which you can, you can see that set on HGTV uh, when I'm crafting or whatever behind me. People say, what is that thing? And it's a French bedroom. So, um, you know, so it, it's just a little of everything when people come in. They're just like, oh, my gosh. But... We also use this spot as a um, sort of a test ground, you know, for lights, for whatever. Um, and then if it's successful here, then we'll take it somewhere else. But, uh, but we're terrible shop owners because um, this is the studio. Um, we shoot TV stuff here. We do lots of things and we don't always remember to unlock the door or open <laughs> or know that we're open or, and people knock on the front glass. They're like, we're like, yes, but the door's locked. Um, so <laughs> I came on Black Friday, oh, and I do you? this every year. It's Pink Friday. I don't know. It's what Pink she's Friday, about. but you're not open. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I do this every year. Why no, do we, we do are. This? You weren't when I came. You uh, probably forgot to. Unlock I wasn't it. here, but I, it's the you first time hey, hearing if we weren't. You forgot to unlock the door. Uh, oh, unlock the door. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. Yes. I'm sure the door was locked. It's so fun. It adds to the to the beauty of it all. And well, and we have that bell because you have to ring the bell yeah, to yeah. get in anyway. Yeah. Uh, we just have to listen for the bell, and that's where the problem <laughs> sometimes comes. You know, I, I think that one of probably people watching one of the things that they're wondering is how do you do it all? How every year do you come up with a new thing or a this creation, a tree filled with macarons and a beautiful lady on the top, or the Santa mugs, or the cakes, whatever. It's like e every year you're creating some new element. How do you do it? I mean, how, how does your mind work like that? That part of it is sort of, I don't really know. There's not really a system to that. Like most designers, especially like in giftware and things, they sit down at the table and they say, this is going to be this year's collection. And I'm going to make ornaments, and I'm going to make a tabletop, and I'm going to make a Santa, and, and this and that. And I've never really thought like that. I would just be wandering around, and I'll see a, you know, a crow, for instance, outside. And I'll draw a crow, and then that becomes Halloween. And, you know, or I'll see a new kind of candy that I wasn't familiar with in another country. And I'll draw that. And it's sort of pieced together, but there's no, there's no real rhyme or reason in making a collection of things. Um, I've done it long enough now that Glitterville has a look, and everything that I do has that look, uh, and that's what pulls it all together in the end, because if, if it wasn't for that look, then who knows what a Higgly Piggly uh, product <laughs> line we'd have. Um, and Brian is good at keeping notes of things like, you know, he keeps notes and okay, he's drawn a crow and okay, he's drawn spaghetti and okay, he's, you know, and he sort of keeps a, a timeline that, um, you know, keeps track of these things and says, well, you've done spaghetti, so you're probably going to need a, you know, garlic bread, a bread <laughs> and whatever it is. And, um, and that sort of starts to pull things together. But. Uh, it's always a mystery, even here. Everybody's like, what are we, what are we getting next year? Um, and sometimes I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, because um, we make the stuff ourselves at our own factory and things, uh, I can think of these things very late. It's not a good process, but I can think of it very late, make it, and um, still get it in the showroom in time for stores to come. Um, and and purchase it so and you really do have a strange sleep schedule you really don't sleep much you don't require much sleep i don't require much sleep but i will say in case in case the soft lens i was promised has not <laughs> been followed through with um i had a lot of bags this week because <laughs> you really in, haven't slept. in dc um there was really no sleep yeah and usually i get on the average probably three hours and that's good um but in the last 
two weeks probably, well, last three or four weeks has been very limited. The last two weeks, very limited. The last week, almost none. Yeah. So it's beginning to catch up with me. Oh, I bet. Uh, but luckily, I don't require much. So every year when we talk, it's always bigger than the last year. And I always wonder, well, this has to be the peak, right? I mean, it's the White House. It has to be the peak. So I have no doubt that you will come up with something amazing next year. But what is next? You don't really, you don't really ever know. I mean, Glitterville. I, I thought for this year, the, you know, we were supposed to go to Europe for a month and do Fortnum and Mason. Um, What's that? We, it's a really fabulous store in okay. London. Um, that's amazing, and I looked forward to that all year. And then when the time came, uh, we did go to London and Paris and Italy and did all those things. But the actual, you know, the letter came that you know, yes, you're doing the it. The scroll. So from the White House. Yes. So we did um, come to the White Horse and a <laughs> pink pillow and golden tassel. Amazing. Uh, you should see it. Um, <laughs> All of that, you know, so we went to Fort Newman Mason and we, we was there like a week and then we had to come home. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be the, um, that was going to be the big thing for this year. And then the White House happened. So, and now even from the White House, I thought, okay, now we can rest. And there's, you know, I know we've got a lot to do, but I didn't know we were going to have a lot plus a lot of like big things uh, still left to do. Yeah. And Brian keeps saying, uh, there's no more big things. There's no more time. There's just no more time for big things. And I always say, well, you know, who knows? We'll see. So You don't say no very often. Um, not to the people who are calling these days. Um, maybe I never said no. Maybe that's why we got to this point. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's hard, you know, because you always think, they always say you're only as good as your last project. So, you know. Of course, the White House was the last project. That's pretty good. So that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> um, you know, but who knows? You know, I don't think I have a real, you know, there's not a plan. And I think sometimes not having a plan uh, is a good thing. No one else here thinks that um, because they have to be on top of it. But um, so I don't know. I don't know what's next. What's next with you? Do you know? <laughs> You know, see? <laughs> that's a good point. Every year is a new adventure. What, um, what kind of feeling? Like, are you grateful when you go to bed at night and you're like, "Oh my gosh, my life is insane." Like, do you feel grateful? I'm not in bed much, so when I get there, <laughs> I'm immediately asleep. So I am grateful, but I don't know that that's the moment that I, I'm going to relish in it because yeah. I don't last long enough to relish. Gotcha. I just yeah, yeah. going to sleep. Yeah. So, you know. But, but yeah, I mean, that you can take, you know, just making things at the kitchen table, you know, to the level that it's been taken to. And, you know, I think the biggest change and the biggest, um, the funnest thing about it all is the people who call, you know, the celebrities that call and, you know, they've got your number and it's like, is there, a, is there like a directory somewhere that everyone gets my number? Um, who? who like, can, they, you, can you tell us who? You know a lot of them. Um, well, I can't name them. You can't name you them. You told me off I the record. I can't name them. Um, but last year you can, you were on their social media. Yes. Can I say it? You can say merely who might follow me on Instagram. Well, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds follow you. And oh, you might, may or may sweet. not. Oh, I've heard of them. Have done your... They're very sweet people, I've heard. <laughs> um, you know, so it's, it's when you get a message like that and it's like, oh, you know, that's where it really um, comes home that yeah. it's like, oh my gosh, everybody loves this stuff. Um, it's wacky, it's crazy, and you know, it's not your standard mm -hmm. Christmas decor. Mm -hmm. And I remember years ago, people would come in the door of the showrooms and they would go, do you have any Christmas? I don't see any red and green. <laughs> and we're like, well, this is Christmas. And they're like, but it's pink. It's like, pink is Christmas. And they would be so, like, beside themselves. There is no red and green. Well, there there's, green. No, there's green. There's, there's no green. There's no white. There's no green. There's no emerald green yeah, or red. Yeah, that's actually hilarious. Um, and these days, no one, no one comes in looking for red and green. Uh, they, they get it. They have accepted that pink and... Um, 
mint and all these colors are Christmas uh -huh. at Glitterville. So that's progress, I think. Um, <laughs> just in time for us to do some red because yeah. <laughs> we just did some red for the White House and it's like, well, maybe we should do a little red. Um, but never that combination of red and green. Yeah, yeah. More like red and pink. Yeah, so. perfect. Hey, you didn't comment. I'm wearing pink. I know. I, and we have matching I bracelets. Just, was this not... <laughs> Who knew? Look at us. But you should know after this many years, you have to show up in pink. Yeah, some form of pink. Some form of pink, yes. I agree. Thank you. It was At great what to point am you. I going to interview you, Abby Ham? When I've done as much as you, you can, you're the There's first. There's so much you're more the first. we could know about you. And <laughs> all you do is plug, come for me. Hey, wanting answers. if you ever want to put me in your suitcase and take me up to the White House with you, I will be there and uh. I will help you craft at not at all. I'll help you not do anything. I'll just sit and watch. Well, I told you about the volunteer program. So Yeah, so, so maybe I'll apply and be you know, your assistant. And, and other people out there, because it wasn't even, you know, even though through the years I've thought, wouldn't it be fun to go to the White House? Um, I never knew that there was a, a national volunteer program at the White House. Yeah, so, it's really cool. Um, where you can come and, you know, fluff garlands and put lights and things and... You That's know, awesome. Have a full experience. Yeah, so, it's so cool. Should well, I put you on that list next yes, year? Yes. yes. You've got a shoe in. See? Put me on the list. Okay. Are you coming? <laughs> yeah. Is, Heck yeah. Is WBR going to let her go? Yes. For, yes, they um, will. I have plenty of vacation time. Oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> you, sh you should save the week of Thanksgiving then. That's when you have to go. Oh, Stephen, it was so your turkey will be on the ground. Yeah, I love it. It's so good to see you. This was just yeah. wonderful. I'm so excited for you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. And I'm, I hope you've seen all the pictures because it's so fun. Oh, I can't wait to share. <laughs>